Alexa, turn on the latest from EV Raceway on YouTube. A well-designed and maintained smart home can drastically improve the comfort and lives of those living in them. They can be a powerful energy-saving device and even an educational tool to provide the family a hub to interact with. This can be pretty daunting for a newcomer and made even more confusing with the plethora of options available and protocols used out there on the marketplace. Stick with us and we'll show you how to set up your own smart home hub with no monthly or annual costs running on open source software and contributed on by volunteers around the world. The system we'll be setting up on your network will run parallel to all the other stuff you have. So hopefully with any luck, you won't have any effect on what you already put in place if you're gonna put this on top of your system you already own. The software we'll be using is called Home Assistant and we'll be downloading it to a Raspberry Pi 4. What you'll need for this is a Raspberry Pi Model 4 and you'll want the two gigabyte model, at least a blank micro SD card with at least 32 gigabytes of memory, an ethernet cord, and a computer with one of those SD card slots. If you navigate to the Home Assistant website, you'll find a ton of very helpful integration guides and documents to help with starting up and integrating your components into the system. Hang tight, I have a small detour for us. Nothing at all against Belena Etcher, but we're going to be using the Raspberry Pi Imager instead. So if you haven't done it already, go ahead and navigate to the Raspberry Pi organization website, aim for software, and download the Raspberry Pi Imager. Step 1 will load the Home Assistant software onto the micro SD card. Stick the blank micro SD card into the SD card adapter. And stick the SD card adapter into the computer. Load the Raspberry Pi imager on the computer. This same tool can be used to download and flash all sorts of out of the box operating systems available for the Raspberry Pi. The one we're going to be aiming for, if you scroll down, is the other specific purpose operating systems. Select Home Assistant and then choose the option for RPi 4. Under Storage, select your micro SD card. Click right and away we go. This should take about 5 minutes. When it's completed, you'll probably get some of these pop-ups. Don't be alerted, this is normal. Go ahead and pull your card from the computer. Okay, step two, we're gonna take that micro SD card we just flashed and put it into the bottom of that Raspberry Pi 4 and plug an ethernet cord in from the ethernet port to your router. Step three, go ahead and plug in and power up your Raspberry Pi 4. I'm showing you what's happening here in the background, but take note, you do not need to plug in a monitor for this. You see, once you get this set up, this will just be a server that works all day, every day in the background and does not have a display attached to it. Step four, from a computer on this network, navigate to homeassistant.local colon 8123 and hopefully you're welcomed with an onboarding screen and everything's great but if this isn't the case it's gonna get a little bit more tricky and I have some recommendations for you double check you're definitely on the same network and you typed everything correctly everyone's home network and router is different so I can't predict everything but I would use a network scanning tool of some type to try to figure out if your Pi has made it online you can grab your micro HDMI adapters and plug those into a monitor to see if the home assistant has listed an IP4 address. And with that IP4 address, whether you found it using the monitor or a scanning tool, if you navigate to that address with colon 8123, 
this should hopefully work and it will actually become the kind of the normal way to log in and if you don't see an ip4 address listed when you plug in your monitor uh you're probably hosed i think you're gonna need to figure out what's going on with your network step five if you made it this far you're so close follow the steps for creating and configuring your account some of your smart home devices on your network may have been discovered automatically. Click finish and... Welcome. Welcome. Well, 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 welcome. Welcome to the entryway. Nah foyer of your smart home. Everyone's dashboard will look a little bit different depending on what was configured and what pulled in, but for the most part, all these layouts for everyone will look pretty much the same. On the sidebar to the left, you'll find some navigation tools to help you get around, and these can be moved around, rearranged, and customized later. You'll find yourself using these four icons at the bottom pretty often. The developer's tools, supervisor, configuration, and user profile. No matter what your creative vision is for your perfect smart home display dashboard, you'll need to be able to pull in and integrate the smart devices in your home now and in the future. This integration page found within the configuration icon works for many manufacturers out there in the marketplace without much trouble or manual coding needed. Once you've integrated your devices with Home Assistant, we'll be able to display and control them within custom dashboards, buttons, and automations. There's quite a few great cards you can drag and drop onto the dashboard that require little to no programming. But to get the really cool stuff, you're going to want to roll your sleeves up a little bit and get dirty with some programming that I think is very, very simple. The programming language we'll be using is called YAML. Sounds like camel. YAML's a text-based, kind of common-sense programming language that is very easy to follow and understand. It's so simple, even Notepad can open it. That's my favorite part. I'm a copy-paste king, baby! There are several integrations that require the modification of the configuration file. And you'll find that right here for the Home Assistant server, which is our Raspberry Pi 4. These files can be accessed several different ways, but we found the easiest way was using the File Editor add-on, or Samba Share. We'll be including in-depth details on future videos on how best to access and set up these specific details and features of the dashboards. But for now, we just wanted to introduce you to the look and feel of the syntax language used for this program. Once you kind of get the look and feel of how the language works, you can browse other people's projects and kind of pick and choose what you want to take from them. And with that, we're done with the basic setup and install of Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi 4. And with that, we'll catch you on the next one. If you haven't already, subscribe, follow, like, all those things. Really appreciate it. Check you next time.